everyone it's apex we got some news today and actually it just keeps coming out I just got some new stuff 10 minutes ago and 50 minutes ago but they opened up the fresh realms or at least announced what they will be they will be doing a pvp one and a normal on the na servers and actually they weren't even gonna do the normal but enough community backlash or request change that and then here are the eu servers steckle and giant stalker and then season four will end in bc and then they'll do their conversion so they're just covering their bases for bc and then here is the really large post, which is mainly covering things like the Unlove Squish, PvP, and faction balance, mainly with Winter's Grass. And some of these things are sort of odd design decisions, but they could work out. So we'll kind of like think about and analyze it a little bit. And they already said that they're not going to have 10 and 25 men share lockouts. It'll just be the heroic and normal. So you can basically, you know, if the fourth boss is too hard, the fifth boss is too hard, you do the first three on heroic and then the last two on normal possibly that's kind of what they're looking at but one of the big things was once toc came out which was just a five boss raid with no trash and you could do the 10 man 25 and then the heroic versions of both so people could easily kill basically 20 bosses pretty much in the same time than it would take to do all of old war and there was just no reason to go back to old war because toc 10 man would give 232s and 25 man hard mode Uldor would give 239 so just seven eye levels higher for the hardest difficulty compared to the easiest difficulty on a very short raid so you can see why that's kind of bad design and they're actually talking about how the idea right now is basically to take all of the toc gear and drop them about 13 eye levels so that hard mode Uldor are just a little bit better than toc normal but items that drop in toc hard modes are better than what drops in Uldor. now Dropping everything by 13 eye levels, that would basically make TOC 10, because there's 232, that'll make it 219, and then that'll make the heroic mode 232, and then that'll make the 25 man mode 232, and then a 25 heroic 245. So basically they're just putting everything down one tier uh, gear level. So that's kind of interesting. I think that would be a good change. Might even mean less pves needed technically so that's actually a pretty nice change when you think about it especially because i know a lot of you don't want to just raid all the time to get the gear so i understand i'm kind of the same and then as well they're thinking about lowering the item level on pvp gear and saying it could be healthy for the game we'll see um they might if they end up doing the nerfs to the raid gear then they might end up doing this as well but if they don't then great for us or they might just delay it the actual release of it to not cause issues i don't know there's a lot up in the air with these sort of design decisions that they're talking about and you know they're talking a little bit about dk's and things being overpowered as for dk's they went out here's a direct quote as for dk's they went out the door they were way too overpowered they just kept finding new ways to make them more powerful than we intended i don't think any of the nerfs to dk's over wrath ever were unjustified that's true. DKs in the original were absolutely busted. And you could even play double DK in some comps and do well. That's that's a pretty good sign that they're broken. So as DKs are coming out, they're going to be great. So that's nice. But they will be watching class balance closely, which means they are open to actually modifying things, which is interesting. And they sort of talk about that a little later. And this relates to things like HPAL Warrior and some of the more in-game things. But we'll get to that. And... Now we go to one of the craziest changes by far in this whole list. One of the biggest things that they're considering doing, which it almost sounds like they will do it, is they're gonna actually add Nitro Boost to Arena in just the first season. And then possibly if they like it or people, people like it, then they might even do it longer than that. This is kind of a crazy change because one, it's gonna do what happened to BC. Everybody in BC, had to have engineering to have the Nye and vulnerability belt. If you didn't have that belt, you just had a huge disadvantage for almost every class and spec. I mean, there was a couple exceptions that didn't need it, but for the most part, the belt was insane. It was a cloth belt with just some stamina and then an on use proc. I'll put it on screen for you, but everyone had to play engineering because of this. And okay, that's, that's not great forcing everybody to have the exact same profession. That's eliminating choice. And then number two, and this is why the belt was worse than Nitro Boost will be. Nitro Boost will be 100% no error rate. So that's nice. But in BC, the belt was like, I think a one in eight or one in 16 chance to backfire. And then you take double damage for a little bit. So you just, you basically lost the game or won the game when you'd use it typically. And that was just awful design. So they're talking about how people have nostalgia for this and we will 
watch how players approach this and change it possibly for later seasons wow that's shocking that they're doing this so that pretty much makes engineering bis for anybody who has passive run speed so that's going to be your assassination rogue that's going to be your dks that's going to be your ret slash preg paladins anyone who has like a you know eight to fifteen percent passive movement speed will for sure want to have engineering just to have the rocket boots because the other people who get rocket boots they will be losing the eight percent passive movement speed to their boots which is a big deal you really need that to have uptime to chase someone around a pillar so losing that enchant is pretty big for some so for instance like a warrior they really need to have that uptime so you have a freedom up you have that eight percent movement speed you'll be able to stay on somebody especially if they have rocket boots because they're going eight percent slower than you so a warrior for instance will probably still not want engineering but now it's a possibility that they do want it versus before it was kind of not as good so this changes things quite a bit for instance my dk i'm for sure going to be jc engineering but you know if i do end up doing a warrior or something i probably will just be jc and then likely blacksmithing or maybe tailoring or something so that's quite an interesting change and then the other big thing they're talking about is the faction balance now I was thinking what they would do, because if you look at the server balance right now, every server on here that, I mean, for the most part, very few are even above 10,000, but Benediction is fully Alliance. I mean, 99.7%. If you're Horde on that server, I feel bad for you. But then again, I feel bad for the Alliance on there because you get no world PVP. So that's kind of lame, but maybe you don't want that. Um, and then Gahanis, Ferlina, Golemag, White Mane, all these, no Alliance whatsoever. I mean, there's a couple of people, maybe like a hundred, but once again, I feel bad for them. Um, but then you have something like Grobulus, where it's actually like the only one above 10,000 players that is split. So we'll have pretty good PvP on that, and Winter's Grass should be pretty healthy in general on that server. But these other servers, I thought they would just do Cross Realm or something, like just match Benediction with Feralina or Gahanis or whatever's most similar in population. Maybe add another server in, for instance, like let's say... Uh, you know tr let's just say transcendence had more it's a german server but let's just say this was an all horde server with like 3000 then you could add that with gahanis and then that'd be 23k and then bendex would be 23k you just glue them together and you'd have happy fun time balanced winner's grasp but they are talking about how they will approach it with a sort of reward system so this is totally brand new this was not this was never in wrath at all and then they're talking about the balance specifically with how Many players oftentimes want their realm and faction to be as large as possible to create a frictionless environment for finding partners in arena or finding groups for dungeons and raids. Right. So you have a larger pool of your server is all on the same faction. So you have access to everybody. That's great. And that, yes, you can find far more partners and whatnot. It's easier to have guilds, everything. And then leveling is really easy. Herbing, mining, whatever in the world. There's no, no enemies. So you don't have to worry about anything. So yeah, it's the path of least resistance. But at the same time, people like me, players also want to have a large number of the opposing factions so they can do world PvP. That's awesome, because then you get to know people on the other server. Oh, it's blank and blank ganking here again, or blank and blank skanking here. You get to know them, create some infamy. I think that's cool for the server. Um, but then it also says those same players want to win the majority of their fights, which means they never want to be outnumbered. So that's the problem. Like I just showed you on the server population list, the only one that's even close to 50-50 it's like 5347. So one of those factions is outnumbered, not by a lot, but it still is. And that can create problems. So Blizzard is deciding that they want to solve it by creating a rewards based bonus. So if you are the underdog faction, which this makes no sense, because if you look at the server list I just showed you, it's like 99.5% or more sided so okay we're gonna give an underdog bonus to 100 people versus 23,000 I mean this is that is not a solution so they're saying you get 50% increase honor 20% increase experience 10% reputation loot bags from quests or whatever as in their words what we really want to lean into is if the realm achieves a certain level of faction balance both factions get the reward well this is great but you're gonna need some significant things to get that to happen I mean when you have rewards like this, you might get like some small migration, but no one's going to want to play when they're less than 1% of the server or 10% of the server. That's just not how it works. So 
And so they are talking about how this is a difficult problem for Blizzard to solve. Instead of trying to twist players' arms and force them to move to certain servers, they are doing this sort of reward system. But then they're talking about how they're going to try and test it on a smaller population server first before putting on one of the mega servers. Well, most of the big servers are mega servers, like I just showed you, that are 99% of one faction. It's not going to work on those kind of servers at all. So, and like they're also saying, many players have already invested money in transferring their characters from realm to realm. They're already where they want to be. This isn't going to fix anything. The only real way to fix this, this is not it, is going to be where you just take one of these mega servers and you put it against another mega server of the opposite faction or even of the same faction if you wanted. You can just do sort of same faction BGs, which they already did in BC. So that's that. And then we also have a couple other things. And they're talking about how during the first season of Wrath S5, there are many different options for you to get PP gear. So the Hateful and Deadly Gladiator gear. And they're talking about the rating requirements around them. And they might modify the Hateful gear requirements while keeping the Deadly as the ultimate PvP gear. And then they're talking about one player needs to win a Winner's Grass match in order to unlock the victory rewards for that player's realm and faction. We're encouraging players to join the battle when it's active to unlock the rewards for the realm and faction. With multiple Winner's Grass running at the same time, it'll enable players from the same realm have more than one chance per period to earn the rewards. That said, we'll continue to monitor the system and make adjustments as needed. So they're doing some other tests with Winner's Grass, which seems a little interesting. I it seems sort of ambiguous with what they're saying in that one player needs to win a match to unlock it. Well, how's a player ever going to win it if they're on the 0.1, side? But once again, they're, they're not really solving the winner's grasp problems. And I think this is kind of odd. And then they had a game producer give a lot more context to things. And they're talking about how Uldar was in the original. The raid was released around three and a half months after Uldar, which is they're talking about TOC, and the gear jumped up. So basically, people were doing TOC very quickly after Uldar. I mean, some people hadn't even cleared the regular Uldar when TOC came out. So that's the problem. They want to keep it there longer because people regard it as one of the best. Makes sense. And then they're also going to talk about how they don't want to cut Season 7 short and how... They'd have to start Season 7 right in the middle of Tier 8 and create a situation where PP gear would be, in many cases, BIS to PvE Raiders. Yeah, so that's a problem. Otherwise, they start it real late, and then we have a terribly short season. So they're saying they're going to release TOC at a time that makes sense to line up with Arena Season 7. That feels much better for PP focus players. So I think what they're going to do, they're going to just delay TOC and Season 7 a bit later than Uldor. So that way people can keep raiding Uldor, get the good gear, enjoy that amazing raid and then hop into Season 7 with TOC. And then they're also talking about how this will increase difficulty in later tiers. So they're also talking about how they don't want to basically mess with any of the mechanics because they have reverence for the encounters, which is also hashtag no changes and the easiest thing to do, no changes. And they're going to lower player power by lowering the item level of these raids, which this has a huge sort of cascading effect on the game. All of these eye level changes and everything. And it's going to do two big things at the end. One, some of the classes that scale really well with gear, like warriors or maybe like a marksman hunter, they're not going to be quite as strong. And they might not even have to raid as much, which is also a nice benefit. Like, okay, great. I don't have to spend as much time raiding to get this gear because warriors, hunters, rogues, they're all super gear dependent and need tons of it so that's kind of a good change depending on how you look at it but then if you want to be really overpowered really strong by the end and this is you know the final expansion wrath of lich king then season eight would be the final season basically so this changes things a little bit for good and for worse for both and yeah they're just trying to curb the high eye level jumps because at the beginning of the game you're like eye level 200 with some of the first epics at the end of the game you're like 284. I mean, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video.